i think out of uh, all uh, all of you have you heard heard or have you tried to understand what is domain driven design and how it is different uh, than other uh, project development approach or application development anyone knows anything because today is definitely going to be a completely theoretical uh, uh, class the reason is that uh i don't want to jump into practical unless uh, until unless the foundation is not clear so anybody uh, anybody who is having any idea what what is domain driven design and uh, why it is better and what what are the selling point of this approach anyone okay so uh, nobody is ready to interact no worries so uh, i think uh, you will get the answer uh, um, within one hour what it is and uh, what kind of approach we should have to adopt uh, this approach domain driven uh, approach right so uh, bef uh, what uh, what uh, whatever we are going to learn i think let me put a uh, put a crux of it that what exactly the scope uh, scope of this session so first how ddd will affect me me in terms of each and every stakeholder or team member uh, team team member right so how it will affect affect this is something uh, so i uh, in normal scenario uh, this thing we consider at the end of session but i kept it in the start of session so that at least we can have expectation uh, with res we can have clear expectation with respect to a domain driven approach right right so uh, first thing we will i will explain you how it will affect right second good bad and effective design so i will i will explain uh, here uh, with respect uh, the uh, parameter which, uh, which can fall uh, fall our design approach either good bad or effective effective design right so i will uh, i will explain you the parameter but uh, i will uh, here it will not be discussed which parameter should handle in which way the, uh, right third part third part is one of the approach uh, appro uh, 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 one of the approach uh, of considering domain driven design that is strategic design and strategic design also uh, uh, have three different uh, different way uh, different way or uh, different approach that is with um, by con uh, with that is with respect to bounded context uh, and the uh, uh, ubiquitous language with subdomain and with context mapping so uh, so by using three approaches we can implement a, we can implement a strategy a strategic uh, uh, strategic uh, approaches to uh, consider domain driven design right there is second uh, second approach also that is tactical design tactical design also has uh, two uh, two different uh, two sub uh, sub approaches that is with respect to aggregate and with uh, and with respect to do domain event actually uh, with respect to tactical design there are few other approaches also but i haven't considered them in this session but i will give you uh, give you how those approaches can be map uh, map with the business terms so that uh, that i will uh, 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 give you the idea uh, in in the last slide right so i hope we are all set with respect to the uh, agenda what i have mentioned over here is there any query anything which you want to understand out of this agenda other than i think some someone should at least one person should interact so that at, uh, i feel that yeah session is alive okay no worry no. okay so uh, uh, let us move uh, move to the our first agenda that is how ddd will affect me right okay so in any any development approach any approach do you think communication matters yes no 
डू यू थिंक कॉम्युनिकेशन मैटर्स कॉम्युनिकेशन मैटर सो सो दिस इज वन ऑफ द पैरामीटर विच डी डी विच डी 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 विल अफेक्ट इन अ गुड और बैड वे दैट we will uh, we will understand uh, uh, in session so this is one of the parameter uh, parameter parameter so uh, so in what happens in uh, we are all uh, mostly um, in mid size or a large size uh, application uh, systems are complex right and issues are always uh, related to the communication but how the team members can efficiently com uh, communicate among themselves if if and if there are uh, robust protocols are defined robust unique unambiguous kind of protocols are defined right if the, those uh, those kind of approaches are there then we can increase efficiency of communication i can uh, uh, i means the failure can be done when we have uh, we, uh, uh, when we have some ambiguity in some kind of terminology right right so uh, we can imagine that if i will uh, if i will go uh, go to the bank and i will uh, discuss about the account then the perspective change with uh, in uh, uh, when i am talking account in terms of any email uh, application right so in email application account has different meaning in finance domain account finance or banking domain account has different meaning right right so uh, such kind of scenario uh, reduce the efficiency of co communication so so when you are uh, when you are trying uh, trying to improve your communication i think uh, uniqueness or robustness of language is required to be uh, required to be implemented that is what we are calling ubiquitous language right all right so uh, uh, so uh, in ddd we are going to consider uh, such kind of appro approaches where we are uh, so that we can improve improve our uh, <coughs> efficiency so far as com communication is concerned now flexibility so in terms of flexibility what uh, uh, what comes in your mind when you are developing any project or you are uh, implementing any solution with respect to any problem in existing uh, ex existing uh, system so any idea any idea any guess anything any knowledge that is also fine so uh, the intention of asking uh, uh, such silly questions to you is to keep our session alive right right Okay. Uh, flexibility. Um, uh, let let me just add my my point there. Mm -hmm. So flexibility means that uh, it, it's it's able to handle change in inputs, Fantastic. and still work uh, and at least give some graceful output. It could be in warning error, uh, and but it could be a functionality mm -hmm. as well. But uh, the crux is basically uh, it is able to handle uh, variants in in inputs and other environmental factors. yeah uh, quite i think in object oriented approach we are uh, we can say that it should be extensible whatever we are implement it should be extensible in very uh, uh, very robust way or you can say in in, in a, uh, on the ease of uh, implementer correct correct so in domain and driven and design objectifications are uh, uh, very important and they uh, in uh, in domain driven domain you can say object oriented approach is considered so here in object oriented approach uh, i think uh, uh, in one uh, one of the solid principle that extensibility is there or uh, and uh, out of that we can achieve flexibility so uh, ddd addresses that part also right so uh, so uh, any kind of change it can be uh, it can be adapted easily why because uh, ddd has uh, has some kind of object oriented uh, implement uh, kind of uh, approach and it uh, it uh, supports extensibility to any smaller or bigger uh, bigger module right third point 
improves domain interface instead of UI UX. What does that mean? So, okay. So what is UI UX? Anyone? Okay, fine. So UI UX is the nothing interface, but, uh, yeah. with, with, with user interface. Correct, correct. So uh, generally what hap happens, we have something implement, uh, implemented at backend or middle layer and uh, we are generating UI. Or we, 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 we are generating prototype of UI and accordingly we are generating uh, backend or middle layer, right? And currently we are following such kind of approach or maximum approaches goes uh, goes with respect to such approach only either first they develop and uh, develop middle layer or backend or uh, first they develop ui and then uh, coupling of this all these component ha happens but in domain driven and de uh, design what happens uh, interface uh, interface is getting uh, developed with respect to specific domain and if it is with respect to specific domain, users are always connected with respect to domain. So it, it, is, it is pretty simple to explain by giving example. If it is an e-commerce uh, uh, site, the user wants to fetch functionality with respect to e-commerce, right? And the complete UI will be developed with respect to domain e-commerce. And if it is uh, developed uh, with respect to uh, the boundaries of domain, the uh, the interface can address maximum needs of that user make sense right make sense what yes. uh, uh, yeah so so uh, if it is a uh, if it is a domain centric uh, the need of user can be addressed very specifically in e-commerce if user uh, user wants to buy any item it's just, uh, and the domain addresses that problem and it fulfills that address. Uh, it fulfills that problem, right? So that way it goes, right? Orientation towards user. I think it's a kind of similar uh, uh, stuff only what I uh, uh, mentioned. So generally, uh, uh, domain are specific to users only normally and uh, why they, uh, why they are specific to user because user has some specific interest with respect to some functionality and and uh, business expert or domain expert full uh, creates the domain according to that interest or that functionality for example if uh, if user uh, if uh, if some uh, if some user wants uh, wants to deal with investment banking domain will be invest uh, investment banking that domain expert will be a kind of business analyst or something and that domain will be created with respect to investment bank only and user uh, user will be interested in the functionality of investment banking, whether in, uh, um, buying any asset, whether buy, uh, buying any bonds or whether investing in equity, those kind of stuff, right? So it is uh, whenever whenever you are impl uh, uh, implementing D DDD, it is always, uh, always user oriented. Why? Because domain addresses the need of users. It is similar to what earlier said, but it is uh, with respect to requirement and earlier it was requ uh, with respect to interface, right? Make sense? Yes, sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, so I, uh, I hope uh, till now I am able to maintain your interest and you people are grasping whatever I am mentioning or I am rendering through my slides, right? And I will be happy if you will uh, take something out of this session, right? So now efficiency. So I think uh, till now you people are enough capable to understand how efficiency will be increased. Can, uh, 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 can we start guessing out of this? Any any guess that how efficiency increases? Okay, no worries. Let us. So again, uh, again, see the thing is that uh, in in DDD everything goes specific with respect to specific functionality, with respect to specific user, with respect to specific uh, specific implementation, right? So and 
on the top of that with respect to if uh, a specific communication model which uh, which i already mentioned what we called it ubiquitous language right right so if everything goes specific then i think uh, i think deviation will be minimized or zero when deviation with respect to uh, with respect to implementation or uh, or or you can say when confusion with respect to implementation or confusion with respect to understanding the problem or confusion with respect to implementation of solution reduces or it goes away then definitely solution uh, solution uh, is more efficient or operation will be more efficient correct Correct. So, uh, so again, so uh, what uh, here also uh, what it is. Uh, see, when it go, uh, when it goes to dom uh, domain expert, domain experts will take care of all all these things, right? Uh, with respect to required knowledge, with respect to problem space, with respect to uh, solution space. So, and with respect at some level, with respect to uh, the terminology which is getting used in. Uh, communication right so when, uh, when all these uh, things comes together then everything goes the way it requires to go everything moves in the uh, with respect to the landscape which is defined right domain expertise okay so uh, how are how we can define domain expertise Okay, so domain expert is nothing, uh, nothing but it is a knowledge, knowledge with respect to uh, the landscape which we want to materialize, right? Or we on which we want to move ahead, right? So if I if I am considering e-commerce or if I am consider, considering uh, uh, education domain or investment banking domain or anything, so associated knowledge with respect to the problem is nothing but a domain uh, it's nothing but it's it, uh, it 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 is domain expertise right so it is uh, and this domain expertise is key to effective implementation of ddd and uh, ddd approach right right because until unless uh, the uh, the knowledge is not up to the mark and up, uh, and specific you cannot define the boundaries and if boundaries are not sharp, then do, uh, then this model may fail or may have some issues, right? Right. So domain. Uh, so when you are for, uh, when you are uh, considering DDD, domain expertise is always key for uh, uh, for the entire approach approach, right? So yeah, when uh, yeah, I think the collaboration with domain experts is actually important when we are approaching for DDD because you know the developers can uh, collaborate with uh, the domain yeah. experts and work easily and efficiently because they are ha they are having a deep understanding of that problem domain, right? Yeah, correct. Agree. Fan uh, yeah, I think uh, it's a uh, very precise uh, uh, precise. Uh, uh, explanation so see domain domain expert always kick off the pro, uh, problem space right and after that it goes uh, goes to entire team or entire stakeholders right so once uh, domain expert kick uh, kick off then similar stuff transfers to technical team similar uh, stuff transferred to qa team similar stuff transfers to other uh, other stakeholders so uh, so but uh, this similar stuff has to define by domain experts and to define these domain experts the expert is uh, is needed and that is something a kickoff point with respect to domain driven design so expertise with respect to domain it is must for uh, must to uh, uh, go with this approach right okay so uh, so the, these are these are the points which i can uh, which i can cons uh, we can consider that how this ddd is going to affect you these are the key points there are many other but uh, i pick that okay these are the point which we should consider when consider mainly because these are the point uh, which directly affects the delivery 
quality of delivery or uh, quality or i think uh, need of delivery right so uh, this is the way how ddd will affect us next next what we have considered that is good bad and effective design so i here we will consider uh, here we will consider how any design uh, what are the parameter which can land any design in such kind of state whether it's a good bad or effective right so let us start with respect to this thing okay what it is says right <laughs> how many of you are agree on this thing see uh, it is a fact i think uh, uh, in uh, uh, our organization uh, you cannot say because uh, um, because our organization actually a software development organization when when you you will uh, uh, work in uh, banking uh, banking banking or some healthcare domain or some other uh, 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 other organization where their core business is different and uh, software development is a secondary part so in those scenario what will happen this software development goes on toss with respect by considering that it is a cost to organization right so when when it's uh, when uh, when any organization start considering uh, software development cost to organization then things goes on toss right right because because they uh, Uh, for organization the purpose purpose of any uh, soft, uh, software tool is to f- to uh, to fulfill the need of business only right they don't bother what uh, what is under the carpet right right so uh, the, uh, this parameter also affects with respect to uh, good bad and effective design okay another thing uh, is with respect to our kind of people that is technologies right or developer so uh, most of uh, p- uh, you people are agree that uh, developers are always engaged with respect to sol- uh, uh, solving uh, the small problem associated with the technology do you agree on that part right but holistic picture is uh, is always missing from them and what uh, uh, how it affects so when holistic picture uh, uh, is missing from any technologies in that scenario uh, the good uh, good design affects in a way so that future uh, when exten- when it is required to consider extensibility that cannot be implemented when only you are aware of small chunk of uh, uh, chunk of entire landscape you agree on that point so such kind of uh, such kind of uh, uh, state also affect uh, affect with respect to entire implementation right implementation or we are what we are saying it is design right if any uh, if you people have any other thought you can please discuss uh, uh, you can open to discuss on that point right right now third uh, third point what is third point any comment on this thing any comment okay see uh, i i'm not sure whether how many of you uh, have, uh, have faced this thing but yes in my career i have definitely faced that first always priority given to database okay let us design design first database and after that on the top of that we will design middle layer and after and then ui so uh, it is always uh, went in that way that, that way but but again here this this happens when when there is a limited knowledge is there with respect to entire landscape so, uh, entire landscape and uh, and if we are concentrating only one part of entire landscape then again design is definitely affected I agree and yeah uh do you understand this is very simple thing but it uh, uh, it is uh, uh, it matters a lot uh, matter. see generally what happens whenever whenever something uh, something is hand over to some functionality is hand over to developer to develop they def- uh, uh, they define uh, the naming convention the way they uh, they want to they want to it is it becomes subjective kind of stuff 
right it becomes subjective so if i uh, even very smallest uh, example i uh, i say if i want to iterate something i uh, i start integer i equal to something zero and i start some people uh, put integer integer count equal to zero and then start right so it becomes subjective now when uh, when uh, this naming convention becomes subjective then mental mod modeling always affects so whatever uh, uh, if someone uh, someone thinks about about, about cart module in e-commerce and uh, tech, tech in technology uh, implementation it was named as a bag then again you cannot map or it is difficult to map that okay in uh, in somewhere in uh, uh, in uh, bdd document it is it is uh, mentioned as cart and now when i am seeing code it is uh, it it is showing some kind of bag so whether the bag and cart is same or something different right or cart is still to implement so so when uh, so this is again gives challenges with respect to design when we are not following the right naming convention Agree? Yeah, and it, it, I think it also affects uh, other developers too because you know uh, whenever let's say uh, there is some developer who has developed something and give and uh, gave some non-proper naming conventions and some yeah, other correct. developer came in his place and then he will he will get really really confused that what is this and what is this. Yeah. So uh, so now here uh, I think in uh, 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 pre previous point we can under, uh, understand the significance of ubiqu ubiqu ubiquitous language, right? Uh, ubiquitous language. And if you if you don't follow, then such scenario occurs when uh, every naming uh, happens with respect to subjective, right? So uh, uh, again, so what is the root cause of this? Root cause is uh, root. Uh, so uh, in uh, so in current root cause is nothing but it is kind of uh, missing of collaboration, missing of uh, communication between between each and every stakeholder or each and every team member. So if something uh, if uh, if your uh, particular team or particular member works in isolation or information is not spreaded evenly in entire. Uh, uh, entire uh, set of stakeholder then such thing always happens if i do not uh, communicate uh, entire team to follow particular naming convention then team will definitely uh, uh, follow the subjective naming convention so the root cause of this is collaboration so in ddd i think uh, collaboration is again a key a key for design so when there is uh, no uh, there is missing collaboration or lack of collaboration then also define uh, design gets affected affected and it depends how it uh, how good bad or effective it is right uh -huh. any comment on this thing see okay uh, uh, when when estimation happens with respect to project timelines are defined right right timelines are defined some it might be possible some scopes are uh, 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 scopes uh, scopes are de uh, are defined or uh, budgets are defined so these are the these are the parameter with respect to project estimation happens right efforts efforts budget and all those stuff right uh, right right and so uh, so how it affect uh, how it affect with respect to design right so when your design is getting driven by uh, estimates or project management activity then it affects actually project management project estimate project scoping should be driven by the design what kind of design it is I'm not saying I'm not saying that while designing you should uh, you should uh, you should not uh, follow the project management, but your project management even estimation it should uh, it should be done with respect to design. Design should not be done with respect to the estimation, right? So eventually, what uh, what will happen? Eventually, chaos will be generated. Segregation of functionality uh, is getting affected. Clear-cut boundary will not be defined with respect to uh, with respect to uh, more than one functional uh, uh, functionality, right? You can uh, you can and you may end up with a kind of monolith uh, implementation, right? So 
uh, so if you are ending up such kind of uh, state then this state is called big ball of mud this is a uh, very common terminology uh, 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 used in domain driven design that is big ball of mud what it is it is something kind of monolith uh, monolith uh, approach it is some kind of boundaries of uh, uh, functionalities are not defined or domain is not defined everything is in chaos then your entire application is nothing but big ball of mud right okay. agree any comment anything uh, yeah just one point i want to make here i think this isn't this result of a poor planning rather than estimations because estimation in any case will have no, to be estimation, done with yeah see uh, again estimation uh, as i'm i have considered here only one parameter of project management estimation is kind of a parameter uh, of uh, project management right mm -hmm. so the uh, so uh, intention of mentioning over here is that estimate should follow the design design should not follow the estimate right that mm -hmm. is the, the uh, yeah, yeah that's right obviously because yeah, once yeah, you yeah. have the design then after that according to, in order to complete that design you'll have to estimate and that should be yeah, I got your point basically. So it, it should not yeah. be basically you first decide the estimate and within this time we have to complete this and then you are forgetting about all the important elements of design, right? I agree. Thanks. Yeah, so that's that, that's the thing, right? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Second one. Uh, I think uh, technologists can answer, uh, can explain this thing better. Any comment from there? So, OK, so what is persistence operation? Anybody can uh, explain what is persistence operation? So generally, that, generally that maintain data actually. Uh, correct, that, that correct, 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 correct. Agree, agree. So again, this or this. Uh, so uh, when persistence operation, oper uh, uh, database operation or per persistence operation is not rightly placed or not uh, 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 or not place uh, place w uh, when it is required uh, required then design gets affected so sometimes or even in i think uh, in earlier uh, uh, days of software development i am talking about 10 15 years back even uh, ui becomes part of dealing with the database so uh, uh, and after that, I think MVC has come. Then uh, the uh, the uh, the location of uh, this DAO object has changed. After after that, when uh, uh, SO, uh, SO has came, then a different approach has been taken. And when distributed implementation, uh, I think uh, uh, web services kind of approach has came, then uh, this persistent operation has changed its strategy. So this persistent operation also uh, plays a very important role, uh, role when you want to end up in good, bad, or effective design, right? Uh, so, uh, so uh, it is. Uh, uh, so it is. It is not developer uh, only responsible. But it should be considered at the time of designing, and developer has to follow those uh, design by considering a unambiguous communication, right? Uh, I think uh, okay. So this is also I think uh, I, it is not required to explain much. So again, uh, so if you want uh, performing uh, uh, performing uh, database interaction, so there are a lot of scenarios when um, database queries are either broken slow or uh, may. Uh, fail while the synchronization with respect to the synchronization synchronization so this also affects the affects the uh, uh, the right design ah abstraction right so again uh, what happened if you uh, if you do not follow right stereotype in the uh, in the start of designing stereotyping i mean to say if you do not define right abstraction or in purely in Java term, I can say that if you don't consider uh, a right interface at the start of start of uh, your design. So if if uh, for each functionality functionality or each entity you are creating new class. 
so this uh, so this is also required to be taken care when abstractions uh, abstractions uh, uh, at the time of abstraction everything suppose uh, everything not uh, suppose uh, supposed to be uh, supposed to be uh, stereotype with respect to some abstraction otherwise again uh, you will fail Exten uh, extensibility you will fail uh, fail with respect to uh, with respect to oh, I, I am not sure whether you have heard about the sandbox sandbox security model so you fail with respect to that model also there are many other things happen so if you uh, you uh, if abstraction is missing then again you may fall, uh, end up with something wrong, at wrong state huh uh, this is also uh, I think uh, very much clear that uh, strongly coupled component will definitely provide the rigidity in extensibility so uh, so uh, if you want to go ahead uh, with respect to ending up the effective and good uh, <clears throat> good designing you need to have loosely coupled uh, comp component component right and if they are loosely coupled i think you can achieve a, uh, even a asynchronous approach also make sense so, Okay, so uh, we are done with respect to good, bad, and if, um, with respect to the parameter, with respect to good, bad, and effective design. So now, what is way ahead? What, uh, how we are uh, uh, going to take care of such kind of uh, parameter when we want to fall in effective de design and good design, and we don't want to end up in bad side, right? So, so way, way ahead is, I think you can say DDD. So, so when when you uh, uh, so, uh, intention of DD, uh, DDD is to eliminate bad part and uh, achieve the effective uh, characteristic in your application or entire uh, or implementation of entire landscape, right? So, so now, first of all, I um, we have uh, we have used term DDD many times, but we haven't defined precisely what is DDD. If anyone is aware, I think free to uh, mention that part. So DDT is a philosophy which centered around the domain. What does that mean? So DD, uh, uh, it's a software development approach which uh, which deals uh, deals with the frontiers or which deals with specific uh, uh, scope or which deals with the sp uh, specific boundaries. So uh, I, that means if uh, if you uh, if you want to follow the uh, domain driven approach, that means you should be clear with respect to domain and its boundaries, and as well as the terminology is getting used in that boundaries, right? So this is a, a, a DDD and boundary. I'm mentioning boundary over here. That means the boundary of knowledge knowledge boundary of business so that has to be uh, very much con constant with respect to domain uh, make sense right so uh, so again if we are specific to boundary then we are always focused with respect to what we want to achieve so this uh, this is something this is something which concentrate our uh, effort in right direction and specific need of business right so what is ddd ddd is uh, ddd is a software development philosophy which canter around the domain Do what is domain domain uh, domain, uh, domain is nothing but it's uh, it's a it's kind of a, uh, a scope of knowledge a, uh, knowledge knowledge within some boundaries right agree uh, any doubt, any further uh, 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 further, further explanation needed to anyone? Consider, should I consider no? Yeah, okay. So, okay, so uh, if we, uh, if we want to consider the boundaries uh, of domain, who is the right person to Pro, uh, to define those boundary any guess actually so the domain experts, experts i guess or actual yes. practitioners or domain uh, subject matter yeah. experts or... 
yeah so generally uh, as we are going at it it is domain driven so let us call them a domain uh, domain domain expert so domain domain experts are those people people who uh, who uh, primarily model the domain and uh, domain and uh, they provide inputs to the rest of uh, rest of the uh, stakeholder or teams with respect to uh, uh, whatever the inputs needed for modeling the entire ddd right and see even if you uh, if i want to mention something very in uh, uh, in very small sentence then see uh, domain uh, domain uh, uh, domain modeling modeling uh, modeling is nothing but but it's a uh, it's about modeling your domain in most explicit way possible so if you want to uh, if you want to go for uh, uh, implementing uh, something with respect to billing so that your uh, your knowledge and all the modeling supposed to happen with respect to that billing module only or billing domain only right and it should be explicitly for billing right right yeah again so what name i think one more terminology i am uh, using with respect to this uh, again and again that is a ubiquitous language right so when you are modeling a uh, modeling at that point of time you need to define the language also with uh, when uh, uh, so that the communication will remain unambiguous and effective right so uh, so and this language sup uh, supposed to be supposed to be uh, valid for business supposed to be valid for testing supposed to be valid for development at the code level also right so uh, what kind of example we should consider when we should say that no okay uh, uh, what side of, what kind of terms are supposed to be there in those language so okay uh, uh, let us consider uh, uh, let us consider uh, e-commerce only e-commerce uh, domain so can you uh, give me some terms which can which we can consider those terms uh valid uh, valid valid across the domain any terms if you want to uh, mention e-commerce cart is there agree products cart search order yeah uh, uh, search is not domain search is a functionality right uh, cart is domain order is domain uh, billing can be considered as domain right even i can say payment also can be considered as a uh, as a term uh, not domain i'm sorry uh, as a uh, uni uh, part of uh, ubiquitous language payment right right so uh, so these uh, these uh, this kind of uh, terminology is supposed to be settled uh, settled down uh, in domain uh, driven appro approach when we are uh, when we are uh, defining the language right right so i think uh, same thing it is there so uh, so lang uh, language supposed to be uh, settled down uh, functionality supposed to be settled down uh, settled down and boundaries supposed to be settled down with respect to ddd so th uh, 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 that is supposed to be basic stuff we need to go ahead with the ddd right okay so uh, now again uh, it, uh, so there there are approaches to uh, uh, to go with the ddd right and uh, and uh, with the help of those approaches uh, ddd can add your uh, add values in your designing so what are what are those approaches strategic strategic design and this is tactical design right so uh, uh, we'll discuss uh, both the things one by uh, one by one but till now before we are moving uh, further any queries anything which uh, you feel that i have explained but uh, you need more uh, insight with respect to that
Yeah, uh, someone wants to uh, speak. Anyone? Okay. Uh, should I move further? Yes. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> oh, fantastic. What is next? Strategic design. Right? And what are those? Th uh, 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 what are the things? Strate uh, what are the things? Strategic design should consider. These are the things. Right. So okay. Uh, so when strategic design is considered, uh, strategic design always deal with bounded context, ubiquitous language, subdomain, context mapping. These are the uh, uh, these are the four uh, four component component or we uh, if we can say uh, four points where strategic de uh, design uh, uh, plays uh, plays its role or settle down with respect to uh, with respect to right approaches for ddd right right okay so okay so strategic de uh, design with bounded context and ubiquitous language right so I have used these two terms till now. Can anyone generate a definition of both this term and mention so that I uh, means I can understand that uh, you people are are with me. <laughs> uh, bounded context means uh, the boundary actually uh, above which the domain is defined. I think. Okay, anyone else? I think bounded context means some of the terms which are uh, fixed all across, uh, all across the domain. I think the you are mentioned such as cards and all. <laughs> Uh, I uh, see. Uh, I I can I can uh, say that yes, you are with me, and you are definitely uh, uh, grasping what uh, what I have mentioned till now. See, bounded bounded context is a semantic contextual boundary, right? So, uh, what does that mean? Uh, semantic contextual boundary. Semantic con contextual boundary that means it is limited uh, limited with respect to some language, and it is limited with respect to some part of landscape of entire application right uh, right and uh, uh, this is what called bounded context and uh, and bounded bounded contexts are supposed uh, supposed uh, supposed to be enough within its boundary so far as its operations are considered all right right so uh, so it is uh, it is uh, uh, so again if i repeat bounded bounded context is a semantic contextual boundary and again this is not specific with uh, if i'm saying bounded context that means uh, it should be separate knowledge it should be separate language apart from that there is one uh, more component we should consider any artifact with respect to this semantic bond uh, with respect to this bounded context supposed to be separate from the other uh, other uh, other artifact of other bond, uh, bonded context so we need to be careful when we are generate uh, generating artifact and we are uh, uh, we, uh, we are making a part of a repository of this artifact they are supposed to be separate with respect to the other uh, artifact of other bounded con context so it is not limited with respect to with respect to knowledge with, with respect to language it should also we should also consider with respect to artifact what we are generating make sense make sense or yes, still uh, yeah okay even uh, even if you will say yes or no i, I will be more than happy <laughs> right okay so uh, now uh, so and uh, now uh, if we consider a knowledge language uh, artifacts and uh, those things there are two more uh, terminology we need to con uh, consider uh, before moving further because whenever whenever we are uh, we are designing or whenever we are trying to implement something it is supposed to be with respect to some problem 
and if it is some problem that means that problem is supposed to be with respect to some solution agree on that part right so there are two terminology uh, often used in uh, domain driven uh, designing that is uh, one is problem space another one is solution space so see uh, there is uh, there is uh, no compli uh, complicated uh, definition of uh, of this thing problem space is something uh, uh, something which uh, which we are getting uh, out of our entire landscape we uh, we we are uh, we are picking some uh, some functionality or some task out of entire landscape which is a problem uh, uh, problem space for uh, uh, for us Uh, uh with respect to the task we need to carry out right right and this problem uh, this problem supposed to be categorized by domain experts where it should land uh, uh, where it should uh, where, with with respect to which domain which uh, sub domain it should be attached attached so problem a uh, problem space is nothing but it's a some uh, some kind of uh, some kind of uh, a part of entire landscape which uh, uh, which uh, which we are going to de uh, develop through entire entire journey of development uh, de development and this problem space is assigned with respect to some, uh, some kind of uh, sub domain or anywhere that uh, domain expert can uh, decide and decide right right so this is the text what uh, uh, i have men uh, mentioned whatever i uh, i have told to you and what is the solution space again solu uh, you can define solution space similarly so one problem space is defined that problem space supposed to be allocated to a domain or sub domain or uh, domain or sub domain or you can say some bounded context right so that uh, 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 that domain sub uh, or bounded context is nothing but th that is the solution space and that solution space uh, is getting picked by whom domain experts clear any doubt mm, i'm considering no <laughs> right okay let us move further okay so again uh, i have you already used ubiquitous ubiquitous language multiple times multiple times but let us uh, let us uh, uh, find out the definition as per uh, many uh, as for some authentic sources sources so what is ubiquitous language any definition which you can generate now till our until uh, discussion uh, till our uh, till whatever we have discussed now <clears throat> can you uh, can you generate definition of ubiquitous UBK, uh, language can we use uh, yes yes i think i can no no about i actually think is yes, uh, you know uh, ubiquitous language is you know a terminology which is shared and consistent among the whole team actually yeah so ha huh, perfect um, uh, perfect so ubiquitous language is a set of unambiguous vocabulary and that is shared across all team member in fact stakeholder so uh, so everyone supposed to be aware of all those terminology uh, terminology and everyone supposed to follow those terminology only so uh, so again ubiquitous language is nothing but it's an unambiguous robust strict tight vocabulary which is getting shared amongst all who are related to particular bounded context perfect clear yes okay so again if i will uh, ask that uh, though i have uh, provided some clue on uh, this thing if I, i i if we want to develop uh, this ubiquitous language who are supposed to be part of that activity who are supposed to be part of that like activity any clue
Actually, the whole team should be the part of it, I think. But, uh, you know, if, if, if we are talking about specifically, let's say, the developers, the analysts, the managers, yeah. you know, and it's all including the stakeholders also. Yeah, exactly. Correct. So, uh, generally, generally, uh, uh, settling down of ubiqu uh, ubiquitous language always supposed to start with domain expert and each and every member of team should take part in settling down all the terms and the language, right? Uh, and uh, lang uh, language and with uh, with respect to all the terms, whatever the functionality is there, that is also supposed to be settled down uh, while defining this ubiquitous language, right? Right. Uh, agree. I'm I'm uh, putting some pause so that I uh, you people have opportunity to ask at least something or make the session alive. Right. Take it. No worries. So again, uh, it is ubiquitous language because everyone follows uh, the same terms, uh, terms and uh, term terminology and uh, uh, terminology and everyone understand with respect to the communication hap happens ha happens so that is why it is called ubiquitous language uh, right and uh, as i mentioned it should be strict uh, exact stringent and tight so uh, if you consider all, all these parameters automatically ambiguity will go away so uh, so there should not be flexibility given uh, given to anyone that uh, that if uh, if i want to uh, mention something as a bill someone is free to call it invoice no if uh, if uh, it is considered as a bill everyone should follow uh, uh, follow the term bill only no one should follow invoice even though linguistically or according to grammar something is right but our grammar is different than uh, the uh, the rest of the world's grammar, right? Make sense? Yes. Fantastic. So uh, again, uh, if you want to go go ahead with some example, uh, these are some examples. In e-commerce, product category, price, discount, those are those are something which we uh, can uh, consider a uh, terms for ubiquitous language. In other domain, banking domain. These are means account balance, transaction deposit. Those are the terms which we should consider uh, cons uh, consider uh, as a as terminology for ubiquitous language. All right. So any uh, anyone has uh, have any other example? Any other example? Mm -hmm. Yes or no is also enough. No worries. No worries. Okay, so uh, till uh, till now we are, uh, we are good uh, with respect to ubiquitous language, and I think now I should move uh, move uh, move further with respect to explaining the subdomains. Uh, I'm moving towards subdomains, and I consider that uh, you are good with respect to ubiquitous language, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So subdomain. Any clue? Please mark, I have used this term subdomain and I have used the term domain also, right? So what is subdomain? Okay, see, see subdomain is nothing, but it, 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 it is a subset of your business domain. It is a part of your uh, uh, business domain, which, uh, which fulfill uh, the specific need of uh, the holistic need of that bounded context or uh, that domain, that domain. So, uh, so uh, uh, in domain driven design, this approach, uh, uh, approach uh, is, take, uh, is considered because uh, some functionality uh, it can be implemented isolated within within that dom uh, domain uh, domain and it uh, fulfills the uh, uh, the need very independently uh, independently so uh, so uh, so it is separated uh, uh, it, it it is it is small module kind of uh, stuff in a domain which is called subdomain so uh, it, it 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 is a sub part of your business domain nothing else right right uh, any uh, any more further 
if uh, uh, clarification needed with respect to subdomain uh, can we consider uh, there is an amazon no, app there is a one mini i think amazon mini deal. so can we consider it as a subdomain of that particular amazon domain? mini uh, i haven't explored much but uh, see uh, okay uh, we can consider anything it, if it is part of amazon right we can consider anything but it depends what kind of subdomain it is subdomain also have different uh, different categories right right so if it is part if it is part of e-commerce right amazon is e-commerce side right so if it is part of e-commerce and it fulfills some isolated uh, some specific need of core domain of uh, of the actually main domain then it is a subdomain but what kind of domain it is that we will understand uh, understand uh, uh, soon right okay so uh, why why there is a need of subdomain see as you have ma mentioned amazon do you think uh, amazon is something uh, a enough large and complex implementation do you agree on that part right so generally what happens uh, uh, normally businesses are either in the uh, either uh, either in the me medium size or large size business cannot uh, go with a small size of application right so they are either medium size or large size and accordingly they are they are having their complexity so to address this problem the concept of subdomain has came up right right so uh, so within the domain we can segregate uh, functionality, uh, functionality uh, functionalities or need need uh, need to fulfill uh, fulfill the functionality of domain in a way so that maintainability and responsibility can be segregated right right uh, make sense okay so it is again uh, as i mentioned it breaks up uh, breaks up your uh, main functionality logically uh, means it's a kind of logical break um, uh, 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 break break up of your whole business right break up of whole business and that uh, again uh, that domain expert is the right person who can do uh, do this breaking up activity uh, breaking activity with the help of technology uh, technology uh, team right so uh, so it is kind of uh, breaking down of uh, logical breaking down of complex uh, pro uh, project in different different module what we are calling subdomain right right uh, okay so as i mentioned that uh, subdomain uh, has uh, some kind of uh, different uh, some kind of categories and different uh, kind of subdomains are there so generally uh, three uh, three kind of subdomains are there one is the core domain core domain one so core domain is something which represent the co uh, the main business of uh, of the client uh, client or of the application right so uh, so for uh, flipkart what is supposed to be core domain right core domain supposed to be e-commerce e-commerce what does that means where he can buy or sell so, right so that is the core domain of flipkart mm -hmm. flipkart right right so it is uh, and uh, all uh, all the other uh, other subdomain will cater uh, cater the need of this core domain right all facilitate this core domain with respect to whatever the need this core domain uh, core domain has right second one uh, uh, okay uh, second one is uh, second one is supportive uh, subdomain <clears throat> what are the suppo uh, supportive uh, uh, subdomain any uh, i think uh, it uh, the name itself suggests what it does right if i will uh, if i will consider flipkart uh, flipkart or e-commerce uh, e-commerce as a uh, core domain then what can be supporting uh, supporting subdomain uh, we should you should consider i think warehousing uh, could be procurement all the ena enabling functions basically that make uh, the e-commerce happen yeah perfect perfect so uh, uh, so 
again apart from buy and sell activity i think do you, do you think uh, cart itself is a supporting domain sub domain yes it is do you think invoicing is also a supporting sub domain yes right because invoicing is nothing who, who takes care of buy and buy and sell Invoic, invoicing something which is documenting buy and sell right so that way it goes it goes so, uh, but, but it is not a core functionality right of e-commerce right so, so again uh, i have mentioned here some education uh, with respect to some education core domain where billing can be billing or user management can be considered as uh, uh, supportive subdomain the third subdomain category is generic subdomain so what is generic again i i, I would prefer if someone can define this thing uh, so generic subdomain probably would be which is uh, kind of domain agnostic uh, and that would be present in any domain uh, for example payments um, or for that matter uh, procurement also i mean which is not having very strong right. allegiance to particular domain and it in any other domain also uh, it would be used in the same way so yeah I'm, correct Correct. So I think you pay you uh, the payment. What example you have mentioned? It is the exact example of generic sub subdomain. So for uh, so if you consider even a Flipkart, do you think uh, uh, the pay, 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 payment is payment is something uh, which requires user? I'm not uh, saying payment with respect to order. Uh, order. I'm saying if uh, if uh, if payment module is there uh, there, that means I'm uh, I'm talking with respect to uh, the team work uh, team working uh, uh, in this uh, in, for this uh, development activity obviously flipkart has to pay uh, pay uh, pay to that team so these are the uh, these are the generic uh, uh, generic subdomain which needs uh, uh, particular uh, particular domains uh, dom domain side to fulfill their generic needs right generic needs and there are many generic needs are there even even you can say uh, if uh, there are uh, need uh, managing infrastructure that is also can be considered as generic need because with uh, uh, without infrastructure you cannot uh, uh, you cannot run your business right right so uh, so taking uh, so those kind of generic needs uh, can be taken care by this generic generic kind of subdomain right i'm saying that payroll uh, what i mentioned that payroll system payroll system again it's a generic everybody uh, means every business needs that right uh, so far clear or any more uh, insight is needed uh, we are 10 minute more than no, it's clear. Yeah, so I will need some more time uh, if you people are comfortable. Uh, I, should I move further or you have another other engagements? <laughs> yes or no is fine. <laughs> I guess I, we can consider it. Yes, and uh, we can further move okay. it. OK, OK. Okay. Okay. Context mapping. <laughs> what this name suggests? What is context ma mapping? So far as uh, so far as uh, uh, we are aware of domain, subdomain, ubiquitous language, uh, all those things. So what is context mapping? Okay. If you have two bonded uh, bonded contexts. What do you need uh, between these two bonded context? Or if you have two subdomain, if you have two domains, so uh, a two or more than two, you can say. So what is needed? If you have a set of, um, I, I, I can say that you have n numbers of domain subdomain. So what is remain now? Because we have already defined uh, domains, we have already defined, defined subdomain. And what next is remain? they should seamlessly communicate between themselves yeah perfect so i think relationship right so how one domain is related to another domain or one subdomain is related to another so on the basis of that relationship communication happens right agree 
right so context mapping is nothing but uh, it defines the relationship between uh, domain subdomain or any other any other comp component in uh, this domain driven approach right uh, this is the definition i think already mentioned okay so okay so one more kind of definition which uh, which explains so content context mapping is a tool that allows developer and domain expert to identify relation between the bonded context and the relationship between the team that are responsible for them right so it is uh, so uh, so uh, it uh, it is for entire team as well as uh, uh, and and entire team as well as for domain expert and uh, this eventually end up in the technical implementation so what kind of communication what kind of contract will be uh, will be considered while exact physical implementation will be done for particular domain right so right so there are okay there are many ways to establish the relationship or there are many kind of relationships are there between domain domain subdomain dom uh, between uh, uh, subdomains or between other component of uh, of uh, uh, ddd right so there are uh, there are many types of uh, uh, relationships so let us uh, understand one by one them right right partnership okay okay so partnership partnership i think it, it is some kind of uh, you can say that there are two subdomain or two domain which deals in partnership so they they help each other to fulfill their interest right example again let us uh, go with the e-commerce uh, e-commerce so there is a order and there is a uh, invoicing uh, uh, subdomain there is order and invoicing so once order completes invoice needs to be generated if order uh, if order is not completed invoice cannot be generated so functionality of both the subdomain are uh, are dependent on e, uh, in both the subdomain one is order if order completes then and only then bill will be generated and for order if order is completed then bill has to be generated otherwise order cannot be completed consider as a completed right right this way so uh, so when two subdomain or domain uh, have relationship which uh, in, in, through what they can fulfill uh, each other's interest then that relationship is called partnership make sense okay uh, free to ask any question though we are cross time line okay okay now second one is called shared kernel shared kernel so this is something uh, something bit confusing we have already mentioned uh, mentioned that every domain domain fulfills some kind of activity or uh, some kind of uh, every domain has some kind of boundaries and some kind of functionality to achieve or some kind of knowledge base to consider or some kind of language to follow but in shared kernel approach what happened if there are two subdomain or uh, uh, two domain they share some kind of uh, activities or some kind of terminology or some kind uh, some kind of uh, component between each other so there is some kind of intersection between two subdomain or domain so that that relationship is called shared kernel right shared kernel relationship right uh, right uh, you uh, is it uh, means did you get what uh, uh, what i wanted to explain you with respect to shared kernel anyone has any doubt considering no doubt <laughs> okay now third one comes with respect to customer supplier i think i should write s as a capital or separated with hyphen okay customer supplier is something where uh, uh, supplier is upstream and customer is downstream 
so uh, so and here relationship is that one is supplier and one is, uh, one is supplier and one is consum uh, cons uh, consumer the, the here the relation is uh, nothing but pro uh, uh, kind of provider and consumer kind of relationship is there right so one, one, in subdomain one behaves as a supplier and another behaves as a consumer i think uh, pretty simple right okay so, uh, next one conformist what does that mean even i think uh, if someone can uh, uh, give me the linguistic meaning that also enough to understand what it is what is conformist okay <clears throat> this is uh, okay this relationship also with respect to Mm, upstream and downstream only but here for ups uh, so far as upstream uh, the domain which takes a, uh, has a responsibility as upstream that has no interest to provide anything you understand but downstream uh, needs something from upstream so here what happens downstream has to fetch something from uh, the upstream so upstream is uh, kind of i am okay uh, uh, i i don't have an interest to provide any uh, any information you to you but if you want something you can take from me so that kind of relationship is there to between two subdomain so here kind of push mechanism happen from uh, the consumer uh, subdomain pull kind of right make sense yes okay anti corruption layer uh, anyone has idea what is anti corruption layer and uh, anyone can guess why it is required over here okay so uh, so uh, uh, let us uh, go back uh, to ubiquitous language so you, what is the scope of ubiquitous language you, uh, scope of ubiquitous language is domain or you can say bounded context or you can say subdomain which means uh, it um, the ubiquitous language uh, 100% valid valid in particular bounded context only for which it is defined or created right now there are two uh, two bounded context or two domain or two subdomain they want to communicate each other it is uh, it is very much uh, possible that both the bounded contexts have different ubiquitous language agree now if they want to communicate uh, each other there should be one layer which can consider uh, which can deal uh, deal with both, both the language and fulfill the interest of both the subdomain so uh, so this anti corruption layer, uh, layer relationship falls in that category so uh, it fulfills the need of two different ubiquitous language language right uh, understood <laughs> okay let me consider it uh, through right and next one open host service by the name anyone can guess what kind of relationship it is it is kind of open to everyone i'm having i i'm having this kind uh, I, I, for uh, for particular subdomain it does something and that subdomain is open to every subdomain to provide uh, pro, provide the inform uh, provide the need, uh, need of all the other subdomain and accordingly uh, uh the language defined in that and such kind of subdomain is, is such so that it it mostly it will be a universal language right for example for example uh, uh, there is a subdomain which provide current time right so if any subdomain has a responsibility to provide the current time of the particular region and if it uh, it has simple protocol that it will provide in millisecond it becomes open and this open host service is available for everyone so it's a kind of open relation with kind, uh, and plus uh, 
a protocol or a language which can be understood to maximum uh, uh, maximum subdomains <coughs> right published language this is the next one right so uh, we have defined uh, some terminology we have defined complete language we have defined some protocols what next is, is needed next is needed to publicize to make aware of each and every team uh, team member stakeholder with respect to that uh, uh, that language and not only team member even if required then it should be provided to other subdomain also so that if tomorrow uh, the other subdomain wants to use but uh, uh, this subdomain uh, some functionality of this subdomain then then other subdomain will will have all the terminology so that it can fulfill its need so so it, it is nothing but a document uh, and documentation for information exchange right so, so that the interpretation of information can be done rightly within the do, uh, subdomain as well subdomain or domain as well as uh, uh, outside the domain and subdomain right okay next one is separate ways what is that <laughs> what is that let me put this thing what is it describe a situation where the integration with one or more boundaries will not produce sufficient payoff through the consumption of various ubiquitous language okay okay uh, did you get wh wh um, uh, wh what does it this means for example i am calling one service and it provides tons of uh, and data uh, tons of data and uh, when i am uh, seeing that data so what i consider the whatever the information i want either it is not enough with respect to some particular service call or it is something more which i again need to parse uh, that information to fulfill my purpose so what happened uh, in uh, uh, there are relationship when uh, when particular subdomain provide some info uh, uh, provide some information uh, to a subdomain uh, subdomain but that information is not enough or it is more than enough or, or in other word we can say it is not exact with respect to the need of other subdomain in that scenario what happens that other subdomain will define its own way to fetch the values from that subdomain so that it makes its own way to fetch the information from particular subdomain so uh, th that relation uh, when uh, communication happen this way in this scenario the relation uh, such relation uh, uh, can be identified that it is a separated ways uh, relationship is with the separated ways right uh, 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 got the crux any doubt no sir okay okay so uh, now the last one big ball of mud i have already defined in i think initial slide what is big ball of mud right right so this is nothing but when you have complex system you have uh, faded boundaries with respect to that system you have complete inconsistent consistency with respect to many subdomain so it becomes kind of chaos with respect to some system so in that system if you um, there are a collection of uh, uh domains or subdomain and you are not sure that okay, uh, means uh, and the uh, clear boundaries are not uh, uh, defined with respect to subdomain or something in that scenario what will happen the all the sub, uh, sub uh, uh, the one boundary is get, uh, is getting created uh, to uh, with respect to all the subdomain and relationship will be maintained with respect to that boundary you can say it's kind of monolith uh, monolith uh, implementation consideration of monolith implementation so uh, with respect to law, uh, some, with respect to many domain or many subdomain there is one boundary is getting created and that is what called big ball of mud and it is nothing but it is 
highly unorganized, highly uh, highly chaotic uh, uh, chaotic implementation, and and it's uh, something uh, called big ball of mud, rightly. So uh, that kind of uh, uh, stuff is there. Uh, you got what I wanted to exactly mention with respect to big ball of mud, if not clear. Can you move further? Yes. Yeah. Let us move to tactical design. So, okay. So here uh, in tactical uh, design, uh, I'm considering here with aggregates and with domain events, but there are other also, uh, also uh, which I will, uh, I will, uh, I will mention you, uh, mention you those name also with respect to the business terminology. But as of now, I'm considering aggregates and domain events because that is something which uh, which is more popular in day-to-day -day stuff, right? Right. Uh, first, uh, first of all, uh, we need to understand what is tactical design, right? Uh, so, tactical design is nothing; is a set of technical resources used in the construction of your domain model, right? And these resources must be applied to work in a single bounded context, right? Uh, so, uh, so it is kind of uh, you can say. It, uh, it is something which with respect to implementation or with respect to physical uh, implementation of your modeling um, of your uh, domain uh, domain modeling right right so uh, the approaches which are considered to uh, to implement physically uh, physically is called tactical uh, tactical design or tactical appro approach with respect to ddd right uh, ddd or domain uh, or you can say domain model uh, modeling mm -hmm. this is something definition what we can find it's a set of technical resources used in construction of your domain model these resources must be applied to work in a single bound so it is obvious we are we, if we are uh, if you are following uh, ddd that means the bounded context has to be followed with respect to whatever approach we are uh, considering right okay <clears throat> yeah building blocks so yeah so uh, uh, obviously without building block you cannot uh, you cannot uh, do any kind of uh, modeling so uh, the, the building blocks we are uh, we are considering over here as i mentioned there is aggregate and domain event what we are as of now we are consider uh, considering and in aggregate there are some uh, other things are also so uh, uh, for tech, uh, implementation of uh, tactical design the sub part is building blocks through what modeling can be uh, considered <clears throat> yeah so uh, okay so uh, means it's again it's it's kind of uh, you can say uh, you need to follow some kind of based approaches to implement the uh, tactical design so that your uh, efficient domain modeling can be uh, con can be done and eventually it addresses your business problem rightly uh, rightly rightly and so now let us jump to the uh, the ag aggregate so what is aggregate aggregate is you can say set of entities and value object right and and in uh, with respect to entities there is one entity uh, one entity uh, is there which uh, sorry with uh, uh, with respect to uh, entity and value object object there is uh, there is a parent entity uh, of uh, everything which is called aggregate root aggregate and aggre what is aggregate root aggregate root is at some level it controls uh, controls for, for all uh, all the aggregate which uh, which uh, uh, which are generated out of it so you means whether it's kind of access or something so that aggregate root initiate the aggregates as well as it's uh, it has some controlling um, uh, mechanism with respect to all the generated aggregate aggregate right and uh, yeah so it control access and behavior of the other uh, object so in aggregate root the operations are there some kind of uh, uh, some kind of entities are there value objects are there so uh, uh, so those are the part of aggregate and uh, on the basis of that the other aggregates are getting generated okay so now we have men uh, we have already uh, mentioned some entities and value objects so let us understand uh, the de definition of uh, what is entity so generally what is entity i think entities is exactly uh, something uh, something same what you have already studied in different 
modeling approach but here uh, one thing is supposed to be considered that here entity is mostly you can say 99% it is mutable mutable and each entity ca carries id with it so every entity has id and it is mutable this is two <clears throat> uh, two characteristics which all, all the entities carry uh, carries in particular aggregate aggregate right uh, all right and again uh, what entity represent obviously entity entity represents some uh, uh, some uh, some kind of individual thing only kind of you can say uh, in object oriented uh, uh, or what uh, oriented uh, approach the objects are there right it represents some things a similar way here some individual things uh, is getting model through entity only right uh, clear okay so let me explain value object right so what is value object again value object is also again a similar what you have seen other modeling object they uh, they hold hold some values there uh, they hold some values and uh, other part over here is that we have in entity we have considered the uh, entity is mostly immutable but in value object value value object value objects are always immutable always immutable and they does not carry any id <laughs> right uh, so uh, in entity they can change their behavior but in value object they cannot change behavior they need to follow consistent behavior uh, throughout the life cycle <laughs> right perfect and uh, so far as uh, when you are uh, when you want to compare compare entity to entity entity is supposed to be compared with respect to id and value object always compared with respect to uh, 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 the way its description or the quantification happens so value object uh, is uh, is always used with respect to uh, describing a, a, anything quantifying anything or measuring uh, measuring anything with respect to entity right clear <laughs> okay 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 so if you want to visualize aggregate uh, how it should be visible i think uh, this is a simple diagram i have created so domain uh, and uh, aggregates are always part of domain uh, entity and value objects are all uh, are sub uh, are always part of aggregate and again uh, generally uh, 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 this is the way uh, happens so one domain many aggregates one aggregate many entity many value object that way it goes right so uh, i have uh, i found some java code so that at least you can uh, map uh, with respect to entity and uh, entity and aggregate so this is entity and this is aggregate so uh, if you can uh, uh, see this thing in uh, um, uh, in entity you will find serial number right right and when you are seeing the aggregate in uh, in entity you will find one uh, serial number that is id what i have mentioned and apart from that you have uh, you uh, found some operation as well and uh, when you go aggregate you you just see how it uh, goes aggregate so aggregate just using the uh, using entity and uh, and it uh, carry, uh, and it utilizes the operation of entity so aggregate holds entity uh, entity in, here it is there is no example of um, uh, value object uh, as of now value, um, as of now value object it is there that is battery root entity so uh, so this is the way when you are implementing it uh, aggregate and entity should uh, look like right okay <laughs> domain events so again uh, yes, uh, so uh, what is domain event domain event is some kind uh, some kind of uh, action or something which should be getting aware by uh, um, by all the component or in particular bonded context you can say so uh, it's a it means it, it it is it is supposed to be a occurrence business significant occurrence and this business significance occurrence supposed to be uh, get, uh, supposed to be i think registered by all the component whether it's uh, whether it's with respect to subdomain with respect to aggregate or whatever aware by uh, all the component of domain so that all the component will 
trigger the action according to that e event so definition is similarly one line definition do domain event is a record of some business significant occurrence in business co uh, context so here what will happen once event is registered by all the component all the component will uh, uh, raise a command or action with respect to the uh, take the action with respect to that event right right <laughs> Yeah, same what I have mentioned. So, so uh, if it occurs uh, uh, happened in one domain, then uh, other part uh, of same domain or in a process supposed to be aware of it. To be aware of it because it might be possible that with respect to that even that part needs some kind of action. So, uh, uh, so again, example, customer place an order, a product was shipped or a payment was received. Th those are the events. And and again, action, uh, uh, there are some subdomain which may require to take action with respect to some events, right? right. And uh, uh, why it is significant or what value uh, domain event uh, adds the value to our approach? See, again, uh, so far as uh, eventing approach is concerned, it decouples almost everything, right? As I mentioned, said event is getting uh, event is supposed to be uh, uh, supposed to be spread all over, and everyone supposed to be aware of that some event is occur. That itself says that it is it is decoupled and it is asynchronous. Every component will uh, will understand that event has occurred and whether uh, that component wants to take action or not. That will be defined uh, defined by that. And uh, that component itself, or you can say service, uh, service or whatever. So it is, so it is very effective in distributed and asynchronous implementation. Okay. Now, event part. So there is uh, next stuff goes with respect to event sourcing. So event sourcing is nothing but that uh, storage of all the events. So storage of all the events. Why it is uh, required? We know uh, to uh, we know that. There may there there may be some scenario where when we need to replay all the event. So uh, so those storing of those those event is uh, nothing but event sourcing event so uh, event sourcing event sourcing. So the event sourcing is also a kind of activity which is uh, which plays very significant role in uh, domain and driven tactical implementation of uh, technical design tactical design of uh, DDD. So these are the uh, definition. Okay. So again, uh, domain uh, domain events are about uh, are about business con uh, concept that has business case about understand. So okay. So uh, so even uh, so if uh, if we if we some uh, if we categorize something as event, that means it uh, it is some action with respect to business it is not a random event suppose uh, right so as as earlier uh, earlier mentioned in example customer place an order that is an event with uh, which uh, which has relation uh, with business so event supposed to be uh, defined in a way which makes sense with respect to business right uh, 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 business and even uh, and all these events will be uh, will be registered with the help of event sourcing right any doubt, any query, any question? No, okay. So let us move to our last slide. I, I told you that apart from apart from aggregate and uh, domain events, there are some other uh, uh, other uh, approaches also as so far as tactical design are concerned. So uh, those terms are you can say so in uh, so far as if, if we consider business language. So in so far as business entities are concerned, we can map those business entities in domain driven approach. Those are aggregate entities and entities and value object, right? Business rules, domain rules. Business flow, sagas. In in domain driven approach, business flows are always uh, uh, recognized through sagas. Business operation, either commands or queries. Business events, events what we have uh, considered. So 
so uh, uh, these are the other terms also which plays a vital role when we are approaching for tactical design and, and design and design but i haven't i i cover only two uh, two of them and, and them over here right so this is the end of my session and let me know if you have any query any doubt anything and i really thankful to all of you that you sustain in the sessions for so long Uh, are you all there? Yes, sir. Yeah. So, any Thank query? If you are having any queries, then please do uh, ask over here. I guess uh, this is the right platform to have your all queries resolved. Uh, is there any uh, specific? applications where we can use this approach or we can use for uh, development of any type of application is there any uh, specific applications uh, for no, development see, of application okay 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 see okay see it is a uh, i can say it is a design what whatever we are saying it is a design right right so if you say is there any application so i can i can say i can i can uh, tell you that okay there is a axon from framework which takes care of uh, event handling uh, very nicely which takes care of uh, uh, means uh, uh, which uh, which can provide you the uh, provide you the, uh, the approaches with re with respect to uh, generating aggregates with uh, with respect to generating command with respect to generating handlers where the events are taken care so there are tools for you can explore the axon framework where you can implement ddd very nicely and i'm um, and uh, uh, as much uh, i have explored axon framework it is driven for domain driven design it is designed for domain domain driven design and there are a lot of role plays by project management also so far as ddd implementation is part is concerned okay thanks yeah i hope you all are satisfied with respect to what i have shared today definitely i couldn't share everything because time is really a big constraint for me or everyone so are you good yeah i guess we are going to uh, wrap up this session because uh, most of them haven't shared their uh, queries but yeah uh, thank you neeraj for coming up, coming up with your query and uh, but just i guess uh, we are going to wrap up and meanwhile if if you are getting any queries then you can later on reach out to abigya directly yeah okay yeah then fine yeah. fine Th thank you abigya for delivering the yeah. session and thank you attendees for uh, attending the session and staying back yeah.